2010 was a year of many events, both happy and tragic. The year opened with two devastating earthquakes. One hit Haiti on the 21st of January, with a magnitude of 7.0, leading to mass devastation and a cholera outbreak. The second was of an 8.8 .8 magnitude and hit Chile, causing a huge tsunami which led to further destruction. On the 15th of April, the notorious Icelandic volcano started spilling ash, delaying flights all over the world and causing travel chaos. The biggest disaster to hit the oil and gas industry with the Deepwater Horizon platform explosion on the 20th of April that killed 11 people and resulted in an oil leak from the Macondo well that was finally blocked on the 19th of September. However, 2010 was also home to some celebratory events. The February Winter Olympics were held in Vancouver and Whistler. Spain won the 2010 FIFA World Cup, a happy event for some, and on the 13th of October last year, 33 Chilean miners who were trapped underground since 5th of August were rescued and CERN researchers encased 38 anti-hydrogen matters for a sixth of a second on the 17th of November, the first time humans have ever successfully trapped antimatter. COP16 was held at the end of 2010 in Cancun, Mexico, from the 29th of November to the 10th of December. Data Monitor Group predicted the outcome of COP16 in a statement on the 25th of November, saying that it would not deliver significant progress on the world climate agenda, and instead served to prepare the ground for subsequent meetings in 2011. In this case, the predictions were proved incorrect. The conference concluded with a modest amount of success and the development of the Cancun Accords, a series of documents that will provide the basis for efforts to confront climate change and after the Kyoto Protocol expires. Included within the Accords are a US $30 billion fund to aid nations who are currently active in helping combat the effects of global warming and a green fund worth approximately US dollars $100 billion a year to help countries implement adaptation and mitigation measures. Predictions to what will happen this year in industry, finance and even your favourite soap opera are by no means few and far between. And the same is true when it comes to the oil and gas industry. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, is just one organisation that made several predictions during the last few months of 2010 with regards to the oil and gas industry in their Global Energy Weekly reports. They believe that the US natural gas balance will remain weak in 2011 as record production continues to depress prices. They also predict that global oil demand will hit a new record in 2011 and oil prices will average at US dollars 85 a barrel but could hit US 100 dollars a barrel. Deloitte has also made predictions for 2011 in two reports, Energy Predictions 2011 and Oil and Gas Reality Check 2011. Claude Illy, partner and head of corporate finance oil and gas at Deloitte Asia Pacific, highlighted some of these predictions, stating that Asia will become a hotbed of oil and gas activity. We envisage further uptrend in upstream acquisitions by Asian national oil companies, particularly in unconventional resources and in LNG. What does 2011 actually have in store for us? Well, I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see. I can, however, let you know what hydrocarbon engineering has lined up for you this year. Our catalyst review is in this issue and the usual pump and valve, sulphur and world reviews are scheduled for later in the year. We are also introducing a compressor review in our August issue. Nancy Yamaguchi, contributing editor, will be providing a series of regional reports looking at the US, India and Japan to name but three. We'll also be presenting our key refining issues in March, June and September and our standout petrochemicals issues in April, July and the key gas issues in May, October and November. We only have one thing to say here at Hydrocarbon Engineering and that's Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.